Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great Wednesday. It was a beautiful Wednesday. Um, first of all, thank you so much for coming in to watch this, but it was a beautiful day because Bitcoin was going up, mine were going down, so it's a great day to buy in, and buy in I did. So I bought another 150 shares of CleanSpark, and I started to buy in to Iris Energy, which I said I would, and I'm going to do that, uh, well, I did it today, 150 shares of it. So I'm starting to take a position in them as well, and I'll continue dollar cost average into both of them while the prices are low before the having event, and maybe even after the having event, they might be a little low after that. All right, but we got to talk about, obviously, why did the miners go down, why I think so. And there was a lot of comments, obviously, on YouTube and Twitter. So we'll get into that. We'll look at that first. We'll also take a look at some other interesting stories about the spot Bitcoin ETF. And then we'll get into Cypher and Marathon providing their quarterly results. We'll take a look at all those numbers there. Okay. So as always, the chapter is going to be down below. And you guys know the drill here. This is not financial advice. For entertainment only, please do your own research. And I'm investing in fine coins and companies for full disclosure. And for full disclosure, I did not put in here Iris Energy. I have to put that in still. So I will do that hopefully by the next video comes around. Okay. So also, if you enjoy this type of content, hit the like button, subscribe. It helps me out tremendously. And let's get into it here. So we're going to get into first, why is Bitcoin going up? And why is are the miners going down for the most part? Uh, we'll take a look at the miners here in a second here as well. But like I said, I saw a lot of comments down on YouTube and Twitter. What's going on here? Why is this happening? And uh, let's see here. Nope, don't want that one, that one. This is what I want. So this is a chart that's a year before the last having event that was in 2022, uh, 2020, sorry. We saw at that point, Bitcoin actually going up. And I've talked about this, I've put, uh, pointed this out to you guys before, but I just wanna point this out again. It does appear like we're having the same si type of cycle, maybe a shorter one than last time because the miners didn't start going down until about nine months before the having event, whereas last time they were going down about a year before the having cycle. So there's a slight improvement there, but we're still going down, it seems like, especially as we've seen it here the last couple of days, uh, prior weeks as well, where Bitcoin has been going up, miners have been, been doing as well, okay? So at that point in the last cycle, prior to the last cycle, Bitcoin was actually up 23% going into the having event, while the miners here that were traded at that time, like Hut A was down 25%, Hive was down 35%, Riot was down 43%, Bitfarms was down 61% and Marathon was down 75%. So we're kind of seeing the same thing. We'll see if this continues going through to our current having cycle. But I mean, right now, at least on the couple of weeks, couple of months here, we're seeing this kind of pattern happening. So I do believe it's going to continue to happen going forward, which is fine because we've seen it before. I kind of expected this to happen as well. Um, I was a little surprised that earlier this year, Bitcoin was going up, miners were going up as well. That kind of threw me off. I, I wasn't sure. But now that we're seeing this kind of happening here over the last couple of weeks, I'm a little bit more confident that this might repeat again. All right, so this is what happened prior to the having cycle. And then if we look a year out, and this is the line here where we had the having cycle, if we look at it, and it's going to get much, much smaller here as the miners actually do really, really well here going forward. So there's our having cycle. So we're about a year out. We can hear, see here that the miners did peak approximately, what is this? At one point, all of them peaked for the most part here at the first peak that we had in Bitcoin, at which point Bitcoin at that time was up uh, approximately, what does that say here? It was daily lines, not looking at daily lines. I'm looking at where Bitcoin was actually up on it. And it's not showing me Bitcoin at that point, but Bitcoin was up quite a bit here at that point as well. It was up over uh, 100 some 50%, I think. I'd have to double check. It's showing me Bitcoin was up. Oh, where is it at? Why am I not seeing it? Bitcoin, well, Bitcoin ended up for the year being out, year out, it was up 269% at that point. Uh, the miners here at this point, this was on February of 2021. So basically, what is that? Roughly 10 months after the having event, the miners were up quite a bit here. So Hive was up 1,620%, Bitfarms was up 1,156, Riot was up 3,457, Marathon was up 5,813, and Hut A was up 576%. And that was just, you know, basically 10 months after the Hemi event. Uh, things did cool off after that. We did come down here a little bit because we did get some FUD here uh, and things like that. And then we went back up uh, on Bitcoin price towards, obviously, in uh, November and things like that of 2021 as well. And that's not being shown here. But Marathon obviously peaked twice here, it looks like. They peaked once here and they also peaked again over here, which at that point they were up almost 7,000%. Okay. So this is kind of what I'm expecting to see happen again, this cycle pre and after. And that's why I'm continuing to dollar cost averaging. So I'm not, I'm not worried. I'm not scared that the miners aren't performing as well. I actually kind of love it because I can buy more in for me, at least. I mean, some of you guys are obviously looking at it like, oh gosh, the world is ending. Uh, be a little bit more positive about it. We have 
and be patient about it. We still have a long ways to go before we get to, you know, being a year out after having a cycle. And at that point, if things don't resemble close to this, I'm not saying it's going to be exactly like this, but at least close, where the miners are up 5x, 10x percent from where they were at the having event, then we can start complaining, I think. But right now, I don't think the time is to complain. I think right now is the time to dollar cost average in. But as always, not financial advice. You guys have to do what's best for you guys. All right, so that's the way things have stacked up here. If we look at how things have stacked up today on the miners, let me get rid of some of these guys here as well. So it makes it a little bit easier to see here. And get rid of hot eight as well. There we go. So Bitcoin right now is up on the day. It's up just a little bit here. It's up about half a percent right now, which is great. But if you look at the miners here, miners were down 7%. Cypher was down 7%. CleanSpark was down 9%. Uh, which other ones? Bit Digital was also down quite a bit here, 7%. Argo was down 5%. Cores was down 5%. Digihost was only 3 DMG was only up. Looks like the only one. Nope. DMG and Solana were both up a little bit here. Solana was up 6%. Then you got Marathon being down 6%, Riot being down 7%, Wolf being down 7%, Iris Energy being down 7% as well. So we're seeing this kind of decoupling a little bit before the event happens. So like I said, patience, dollar cost averaging if you can, and I think things will be a lot better next year when we look at it uh, right around this time frame going into obviously December and January of next uh, 2025 as well. All right, other good news here, possibly. The only thing that might change all this is if we do get the spot Bitcoin ETF, because at that point, we just don't know how much money is going to flow into it. And when money starts flowing into it, into Bitcoin, that's going to obviously also, I believe, raise the prices of the miners as well. And that's mainly because at that point, we just don't know where Bitcoin's going to go and how fast it's going to go. So that's the only thing that could offset all of this, right? So if that happens, I don't know how the miners will react. I think they will go up. So it might be a good time to buy, like I said, before that happens potentially sometime this year or next year. But here's what we have on that. So we have a little tweet here, and these are from the Bloomberg analyst, I believe. And here's what they had to say. Bitcoin, Bitcoin ETFs approval opportunity. Potential Bitcoin ETF approval window opens for BlackRock and peers. A brief window opens on November 9th, which is tomorrow, for the SEC to potentially approve all 12 U.S. Bit, uh, spot Bitcoin ETF applications, including Grayscale's GBTC. It will be open for at least eight days. Even if approvals don't arrive this month, we still believe there's a 90% chance of approval by January 10th. So that's fascinating. That's interesting news. And that's great news, actually. So, you know, we're going to get there. It's just a matter of when it's going to get there. Okay. But until it happens, I think the miners may continue to lag behind uh, Bitcoin and continue maybe a little bit of downfall. Okay. I don't know if they're going to bottom out like they did last year in December at those prices, but I think it will be a slow decline going forward. Okay. So that's it for that. Let me know what you guys think of that. If you guys agree, disagree, love to hear it in the comments. And then let's take a look at the actual uh, Q3 results. So Cypher Mining provides third quarter 2023 business update. And here's what we have from them. Uh, they did sign uh, an agreement to acquire a new Texas-based ERCOT approved site with interconnection of up to 300 megawatts expected to come online in 2025. That's great, but it's going to be way after the having event. So more or less, it's going to be a build out for the following having event. Right, right, they're going to try to get this uh, set up, built and going uh, probably before the next having event, which is going to be in 2028, right? So at this time, depending on when it comes online in 2025, <clears throat> we should be peaking with Bitcoin or starting to go down in price a little bit based on the cycles that we have seen so far. Okay, they also purchased 1.2x the hash of the latest generation S21 bit main rigs, bringing total hash rate in operational and under contract to 8.4x the hash. So that's good there. It's good to see that they are growing. And then their G8 gap diluted net loss was at seven cents per share. It's, I believe it's a little bit higher than the prior quarter, but we'll take a look at it. And then nine gap diluted net income of uh, two cents per share. Okay. And if we look at, we're not going to get into it too far, too deep. Let's see here. They pretty much cover the same stuff as, as on top. Going down here, we have the actual numbers for them. I've put in all the numbers for my spreadsheet. So let's take a look at that. And then we'll have some charts to look at as well for that one. So if we look at Cypher right now, Cypher has 250 more, 250 more, 254 million shares outstanding right now as of reported today. Um, it was actually a decrease from the numbers they had in uh, when they reported the Q2 numbers. And I'll show you that down below. It was just a point like zero two difference on it. Uh, I'm not sure why that is, but that's what we have. <clears throat> Excuse me. And market cap right now on them is in 909 million. So pretty well priced, $3.57 as of today on them okay uh let's see here going down here we'll take a look at some of the metrics here for the last four quarters 
So Q4 was pretty low. They have been increasing here. We did see a slight decrease here in Q3. Not sure why that is. They actually mined a little bit more, I believe. And the reason might be also that May for Q2 was a big month for them. They mined a lot during that month. If we look at it over here, you can see revenue was quite uh, quite high here in May. 13.56 million in revenue for that uh, month. So that's probably possibly why. And that was attributable to the network hash rate, not the network hash rate, network, oh uh, gosh, uh, transaction fees. That was attributable to that. Q3 obviously came down here. Q4, which is what we're currently in, is estimated to be about 39 million. So that would be a nice increase here if Bitcoin continues to go up. Okay, uh, last for course operating costs, those have actually come down here a little bit to 36.9 from 37.2, so that's good there. Cost to mine one BTC minus depreciation went down to 10.9, almost 11,000 from 12.6, so that's also good to see there. And then Bitcoin mine quarterly actually came down a little bit here, and like I said, it was attributable to the network transaction fees being added on Q2, which helped them out quite a bit there. Okay, debt to equity ratio, lower is better. It's not too bad. It's actually 0.21, so that's pretty good. Current ratio higher is better. It's above one, so that is good there as well. Total current assets right now as of Q3 are 54 million, and then total current liabilities is at 38.9 million roughly. So that's pretty good there as well. So no concerns there for them. Now looking at their actual financials here, we can see here Q3 numbers. We'll get into some of these metrics here at the end of it, but here's where we got. So 54 million. 54.4 million total current assets. That is an increase of about 12 million over Q2. So that's good there. Total assets is pretty much uh, actually went down a little bit here to 416 million from 416, uh, 723,000. Um, so down several hundred thousand dollars there. Liabilities also, let me see here, went up a little bit here, 38.9 million roughly from 38.7 million. So that's still not too bad there. Not a big concern. Total liabilities. Uh, went up 300,000, it looks like, to 73.8 million from 73.5 million, so that's fine there. Revenues, you can see here that they were down a little bit here, down about uh, 900,000 in revenue, self-mining. And let's take a look at what else here we have. Cost of revenue actually came down to 13 million from 15.8, so that's good there. Cost of revenue, let's see what else we got here. General administrative uh, went up a little bit, 23.9 from 23.3. Uh, don't like seeing that too much, rather let's see that coming down. Depreciation, done amortization, don't care about that. Change in fair value. What else do we have here? Cost of revenue went up uh, to 18 million from 11.5. Cost of depreciation, cost of revenue minus depreciation actually went down a little bit here at 36 million, 36.9 million from 37.2 million. Gross profit minus depreciation here was actually down. Uh, 1.9 million compared to a positive 2.8 million here on that. This is my charts. These are my calculations. These are not included in their calculation calculations. Uh, looking down here, lost before taxes, we lost 18 million compared to 12 million. So that was unfortunate. The only reason I can see why that is for a loss here, let me see if we can find it. Uh, it was uh, total cost and operating expenses increased by 6 million here. That's mainly the reason why I think on that one. And then obviously they lost seven shares uh, per share. If we take out the depreciation out of that, it would have been a loss of only a penny on it, okay? So that's how things have stacked up. And looking at it here, BTC mined, they actually mined less, like I said, and that's based on the network transaction fees weren't that great in the current quarter in Q3. And what else can we take a look at here? Hash rate, increase of BTC mine per average hash rate, uh, Cost to mine, one BTC minus depreciation, like I said, went down to 10.9. So that's great to see that. We already covered debt to equity current ratio as well. Then you got the book to value equity, uh, price to book ratio, enterprise value, a beta, EV, a beta as well. Oh, I should have probably put those in there as well. Uh, let's see here. We get that, that. There we go. Is that correct? Yeah, we're using the numbers there. Uh, yeah. Okay. So those are the numbers there. Revenue in general administrative is at 23% right now. So it's up from 21%, or sorry, revenue was 30 million. Their general administrative compensation was 23 million. So that's high, 78% right there based on it. Is that correct? Let's see here. I'm going to double check. General administrative, 23 million. That seems definitely high for me. Uh, Got to cut that down quite tremendously here. Love to see that be below. 20 percent. Uh, some my, some companies are, <clears throat> excuse me, pretty close to that. Others are not. And then, oh, excuse me, I gotta clear my throat here. Okay, we're back. And 
we'll have to see how they go forward, but it has been increasing, kind of decreased here a little bit in Q2, but it's been back up now in Q3. So I, I do not like seeing that. All right, definitely too much overhead there. Um, other than that, right now they are, I think, undervalued. Currently, they should be between $4.82 to $7.23 on the higher end, uh, but they definitely got to cut some of the fat that they do have there in general administrative. It's, it's, it's high, it's a bit too high. Okay, so that's where we stand right now. Let me know what you guys think, and let's get into Marathon here. So Marathon, Digital Holdings reports their third quarter as well, and here's what we have on them. Uh, third quarter 2023 financial results, the company recorded net income of $64.1 million, or $0.35 cents per diluted share uh, they earned, basically, during the three months ended September 30th, 2023, compared to a net loss of $72.5 million, or $0.62 cents loss per share in the same period last year. So that's actually pretty good. We'll take a look at the numbers that I do have for them and show you guys why that is. And then revenues were $97.8 million for the quarter compared to 2022 revenues in, for the same quarter of $12.7 million. That is a huge increase, right? Remember last year, they were in trouble with their facility in Hardin, Montana. That one was down for a little bit. That got them down to like 700 petahash at the low. Then they started to kind of build themselves out of it. So this obviously represents a 467% increase in revenue over year over year, basically. And this was amplified by 32% higher average Bitcoin price during the current uh, period, which was good to see. And then the company also sold 66% of the Bitcoin produced in the quarter to fund operating costs, which I thought was good, right? There should be a mix of HODL and selling in order to, one, not dilute shareholders too much, but also to just fund operations and things like that. So it's not on the back of the shareholders to do that. Uh, let's see, this quarter also uniquely benefited from a 82.6 million gain from the extinguishment of debt while the year ago period included 29.8 million gain on sale of equipment, a 25 million legal reserve, and 39 million impairment due to vendor bankruptcy, all of which did not occur in 2023. So that was obviously a good thing there. The main thing is the 82.6 million gain from the extinguishment of debt, which they said they were saving by diluting shares, obviously, and paying down a portion of the debt, I think close to 400 million, that they saved the 82.6 million on that. So that's being recorded here on that one. And that's obviously what kind of really helped them out uh, be positive on the share, um, share price or, well, income per share, okay? Uh, going down here, adjusted beta was 43.7 million in current year uh, period compared with the loss of 6.1 million in the prior year period. This year over year increase was primarily due to improving profitability as total margin, excluding depreciation and amortization, improved 38.2 million up from a loss of 1.1 million in the year ago period. Reported adjusted beta also benefited from 19.8 million of Bitcoin gains net on a net of impairment losses versus 1.4 million impairment loss in the third quarter of 2022. All right, so all pretty good things here considering. Um, let's take a, look at, take a look at the numbers I do have for them and we'll call it a day. Today should be a pretty easy one. We're still waiting on Riot to provide their numbers as well. Uh, I checked before well, I checked around 5 o'clock, but they haven't been posted to the SEC website yet, so we're still waiting on those numbers to get reported because that's what I really like to use when putting the stuff into my spreadsheets here. All right, so today they reported they have 22.625 million shares outstanding. Current stock price is $8.55, market cap about $1.9 billion right now. Uh, they're obviously growing nicely here. They're expanding into Paraguay, into Abu Dhabi. All that stuff is definitely going to be helping them in the future. Uh, which is great to see. We've, talk, we've talked about this earlier this week or last week. I think we covered their uh, production update for October. What we're really going to look at is the quarterly results here. So this is the last four quarters revenue. Uh, last year, they were at $28.42 million. Uh, in Q4, obviously we don't have Q3 in here, but it did improve in Q4 for them. And then Q1 was $51 million, and Q2, $81 million. Now Q3 at $97 million. Now the current quarter that we're in, I'm looking to have them at about 112 million. If Bitcoin stays where it's at, or if it goes up higher, that's going to be up higher as well, depending on how well they operate uh, in their uptime. For the machines, last four quarters, operating cost depreciation, minus depreciation, uh, has been going up, which is expected because their hash rate has been increasing substantially as well. So that's not a big deal there. Cost to mine one BTC minus depreciation has come down to about 17,000, which is good because it was in Q2 at 18,000, almost 19,000 there. So that's good to see that. And then you can see Bitcoin mine quarterly has been increasing here steadily. And, and that's something we definitely want to see going forward. It means that they are growing, then they're growing faster than the network hash rate is. So that's how they're able to generate more and more each quarter. So that's great. Debt to equity is lower is better. So that has come down to 0.35, which is great. Current ratio higher is better. 
it's still, it went down a little bit here to 11.33 from 14.9, but it's still way above the one mark, one, one line mark basically, which says they can basically pay the current uh, debt uh, 11 times over right now with current, with current uh, assets. And then you can see obviously total current assets is at 432 million, so that did increase, that's good to see. Total current liabilities did increase to about 10 million, not too bad, it's at 38 million. They got plenty of uh, cash to pay that off if they needed to. Okay. Uh, let me see here. On Marathon, I was off by, my estimate was 97,363,000 in revenue. I was off by 0.5%, negative 0.5%. Um, so really close to that. Love seeing that. And on Cypher, I forgot to show you guys on Cypher. Cypher, I was off by like 3%, I think, on them. Uh, if we look at Cypher, where is Cypher? Down here. Yeah, 3.61%. So still pretty close. I want to be within 5%. Orig Hopefully I can be within 2.5%. That's my ideal goal, but I'm happy with being within 5% on those numbers. Okay. All right. Back to Marathon. Sorry about that. There's always so many things to cover. I might forget from time to time. So we'll get into these metrics down here in a little bit. Let's take a look at their assets here. So assets did increase uh, about 10 million roughly. So that's good to 432 million, which is nice to see. Their total assets uh, went up about the same, about 10 million to 1.383 billion. Okay, from the 1.73 billion that they had, current liabilities here went up th uh, about 10 million as well to 38 million from 28 million. So that's not bad. Total liabilities uh, actually decreased here to 363 million from the 762 million. So they did pay off roughly 400 million in debt that they had here, right on the book. So that was part of that 80. And they're going to report it down here. It's the 82 million, whatever it was, that they recouped on that or saved on that, if you want to call it. Total liabilities and stockholder equity, 1.383 million, up about 10 million here, which is nice. And then mining revenue was 97 million, 849,000. If we look at cost of revenues minus depreciation, percentage of that was 54%. Uh, and then cost of revenue, energy, hosting, and other was 60.94%. So that's pretty good. Operating expenses, let's see here. Do we have it as a positive? Where's that one that I'm looking for? Uh, general administrative was at 20.141 million. So that's down from the 20.491 million. So that's good. Like seeing that coming down. Don't like seeing that going up where it went from Q1 to Q2 up about 5 million. So like seeing that coming down. That's good. Uh, let's see here. What else do we have here? Total operating expenses was only a negative 306,000 compared to negative 5.5 million. So that's good there. And then here we go. Net gain from extinguishment of debt. They got basically 82.6 million on that. That is what really saved them and got them above uh, positive sh uh, positive earnings per share, basically, on this one. So we'll see if this can get better, or I doubt it's going to get better. Well, I don't think it's going to get better. I think at least if they can be positive earnings per share this coming quarter as well, that would be a good sign going forward. Uh, let's see here. What else do we have, have here? So income loss before income tax was 64 million positive. They had a loss of 18.9 million in the prior quarter. Net loss was 64 million or gain of 64 million, where we had a loss of 19 million in the prior quarter. So their earnings per share was up to 36 cents compared to the loss of 13 cents the prior quarter. So that's good there. And they're using basic and diluted shares here on that. And if we took out the depreciation on this number here, they would be at 117 million in basically revenue, net, uh, net gain, and they would be up to 62 cents earnings per share on that. Okay. So all in all, really good quarter for them. This definitely helped out. Uh, but surprisingly, we'll see how the stock uh, actually reacts tomorrow on the news, right? I think this is actually really good news. So going into here, cost to my one BTC minus depreciation, 17,000, like I said earlier. So that's down, so that's good. Debt to equity, we talked about that. We got the book to value as well. Evita minus, let's do that as well. So you got the uh, book value of equity assets, price to book value, enterprise value, Evita, and all that stuff. You guys can see that right there. Revenue was 97 million. General administrative was 20 million. So that's only 20% of that, which is good. I like seeing that. I uh, love to see that come down even more here. And then we can see that the shares did increase. Obviously, they diluted to pay off the debt. But shares increased by about 27% here from the prior quarter when they reported. So now we're at 222 million shares as of today. All right. Other than that, um, I still think that they're undervalued from where they should be. I think based on the numbers that we do have here, and I think I'm using the latest numbers for them. They should be between $15.43 to $23.15. They're at $8.55 right now. Definitely undervalued in my opinion, okay? 
Let me know what you guys think of this one, as always. And then, as always, this is going to be available to my Patreon members. They get all of these spreadsheets for uh, measly $5 a month with every update that I do uh, gets updated to them as well. So I think it's a great deal there. I'd love to see you in there. I'd love to see you in the Discord that we have, the private channel as well. Got a great uh, conversation going there about the miners, the markets, the Bitcoin, and everything else, and MicroStrategy. So it's a great place to discuss in there as well. All right. So that's it. Let me know what you thought of all of this. Again, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Thank you to the Patreon members, the YouTube members, everybody. Um, you know, you guys definitely help out to make this possible. So thank you so much. Um, but we'll see what happens tomorrow. We'll see what happens with Bitcoin. And like I said, be patient. We're in this early. It's still going to take a little time before we possibly go much higher from where we are right now. All right. So have a great night. I'll see you guys in the next one.